This is the impact of spinal cord injuries, or SCI, on respiratory function of a patient. The actual effect on respiratory function depends on the level of the spinal cord injury. If the patient has a spinal cord injury in a high cervical region, C1 through 5, for instance, they can have phrenic nerve dysfunction. Remember that the diaphragm is innervated by the phrenic nerve from C3 through 5, which keeps the diaphragm alive. If this is damaged, they can have diaphragmatic weakness and paralysis, and they'll need mechanical ventilation. They'll also have intestinal atony, which can cause abdominal distension, and when that gets really bad, that can also hamper respiratory function. If you have a lower spinal cord injury, you could have weakness or paralysis of the abdominal muscles, if it's T6 to T12, or of the intercostal muscles, if it's T1 to T11. This results in a diaphragm that functions less efficiently, so they might need mechanical ventilation. If you have these lower spinal cord injuries, you might also have difficulty producing an adequate cough, so the patient would not be able to clear their lungs, and they might have recurrent pulmonary infections and atelectasis. Notably, if a patient with a spinal cord injury has failed extubation, you do want to consider tracheostomy within 7 to 10 days of the injury. This will help them reduce their mechanical ventilation, improve their pulmonary toilet, reduce their sedation, and allow for therapy.